everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to be doing some pinwheel canes. And yes, this is another Zentangle style type cane, and I'm really excited about this one. This one is going to be, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, how easy is this? How much fun is this? And so right here, I'm bringing in my black clay, and really I rolled this thing out, I want to say on a number four, but it really doesn't matter. And part of the reason was is because I'm going to be rolling this up into a giant black log. Now once I do this, I'm going to cut off my ends, and then once I have those cut off, I'm going to punch this black wad, you might say, down. It's going to be about an inch tall, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring my blade in, and I'm going to start squaring it up, or I'm going to start cutting you know, four sides on this thing so I get a nice square. I'm going to do the same thing with my white clay as well. So right here, of course, I'm bringing in my tissue blade and I'm just cutting off the rounded edges of each of my little circular logs here. This is going to give me my square kind of log look, if you will. Now when I do this, I'm going to do this on the black and the white, what we're going to do is we're going to trim these down to about, I want to say, three quarters to an inch in diameter, somewhere along those lines. And if you don't want to use a ruler, all you have to do is set these things right next to each other, line them up, and then just use your blade by cutting both together. This way then you'll make sure you get the right size and you don't need to use a ruler then. It's like, you know, right there, you've got the same size on both of these squares and you can go from there. Once you have your black and your white the same size, come in with one with the black one here, cut it in half diagonally, you'll have two triangles, and then do the same with the white. Pull those apart and then bring them back in together and take your points and go where you have black, white, black, white, and this will give you your original pinwheel pattern. From here, I'll go ahead and take this block then, and I'll start reducing it down. Make sure it's lined up really well at the beginning because that's the crucial area. So make sure all of your points are not necessarily, like the black is not touching the black, and the white is not touching the white. You want this to all come right in as close to center, where they're all touching black, white, black, white together. Once you have this though, you reduce this down, and when you get it down to where you really like the size of this particular cane, I got this thing down, I want to say, to a half of an inch in the end, and then I started cutting slices, and I cut 16 slices, all right? You're going to take those slices, and you're going to bake those at, in your oven at 275 degrees for about 7 to 10 minutes. Now, some of you are probably wondering, okay, why would she cut the slices and bake them for seven to 10 minutes? The reason is, and if you've seen any of my Zentangle style type videos before, what I do is I like to make 16 slices and each of those slices represent a cane or that, that cane, all right? What you do with those slices then is you change them around in different directions to see what kind of patterns you get. Because when you have 16 of these little, <laughs> these little slices around, the patterns you can get out of them and the combinations are immense. <laughs> they can go on forever with some of these canes. And in this case, yeah, you get a lot of different combinations. You get a, a lot of different looks because you have different sides with different color variation. So like in this case, you have black on one side and white on the other. Well, if you flip it around, you know, in a different direction than say to the next piece that's sitting right next to it, 
yeah, it's going to change up quite a bit. Now, I put all of these particular slices on my board here, or on my um, tile, I should say. And what I'm going to do with them is I'm eventually going to come in and I'm going to start squaring them up. So I try to get them as precise as possible because when I cut this down, you know, anytime you cut a slice off of a cane, sometimes it can warp a little bit. So I'm trying to get these as precise as I can. That way then I get a much more accurate look of what a pattern might be when I put these combinations together. Okay, so here are a few different patterns that I found just in changing around the different directions of how those little tiles were going to be. So you can imagine all the different kinds of canes you can get. This, there's, I think, 14 in here, but I know, I absolutely know there are more. So I do highly suggest cutting off 16 slices, playing with this combination, and seeing what else you can find that I have not found here. Okay, so this is the fun stuff. Oh yes, I am making a log here of my white clay and I'm bringing in my altered polymer clay gun. Now this clay gun, this is a um, Sculpey clay gun, okay? And it has, I wanna say 18 or 19 discs. One of the little discs in this clay gun is a triangle disc. It's, it's perfect for this, look at this. It's a triangle disc, you can't ask for better. I'm loving this. <laughs> it's so great because all I have to do is press this out. I have triangular like log coming out of here. Now you wanna press out enough of this so that you can make 16 smaller kinds of canes because that's really what we're gonna be shooting for here. We're gonna be pressing this out and this, um, I've only got the one at the top here, and that's because at first, when I first did this, I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. I thought it should, but I wasn't sure how well it would come together, and it worked out better than I even had even hoped. So what you're going to do is, you know, if you really just want to test it out like I'm doing here, I pressed out one long length, okay, and then I brought in my black, and I'm going to press out another long length. Now you're probably wondering here, okay, she's got a caulking gun. How did she get this all together? I have another video. It's the Sculpey Clay Gun Solution. Um, if you go and look for that in, in my videos, you're gonna find that. It shows you how I put all of that mechanism around the original clay gun together and where to find all the different pieces. But I will make sure I drop a link in the description area on this video, and that way then if you're really trying to find out, okay, where is this thing, it'll be right in there. Anyways, as you can tell here, I'm bringing in a lot of different lengths of black. I have a bunch of white, but it's up out of the frame, so you can't really see it. Anyway, once you have these all kind of lengthened out like I have here, I've got a five inch, you know, and this was the first time around when I started doing it because I wasn't sure what I would need. But in the end, what happened was I started cutting these smaller little triangular logs at two inches long. That seemed to work fantastic. And I didn't want to get beyond two inches because if you get longer than two, it gets really unwieldy. You want to have two inches. That's going to make it really nice because what's going to happen here is you're going to put these together 
And when you get half of this cane together, you're going to want to go ahead and take that half and cut it in half. And that will give you your 16. It'll make it one inch tall. It'll be the perfect size. So as you can tell here, I've come in, I've started cutting my also my two inch long lengths of my white triangular cane, uh, ropes as well. Once I get a number of these together, you know, I thought, okay, let's go ahead and form them up. And what you're going to do here is you're going to do exactly as I'm doing right here. You're going to take the, I want to say the longer side of the triangle will be on the outside. Okay. And your shorter, uh, your shorter sides of your triangle will be on the inside. In other words, it's going to butt up against its white or black component. So once you have that together, you're going to have four of these. So you'll have two white, two black, put them together. And there is your little square pinwheel cane. And I, <laughs> oh, oh, once I got this, I was like, okay, this totally taught me. I don't have to start from way large, you know, with that one inch brick and then reduce it all down. To heck with that, I'll just go right to my clay gun and I'll just have a ball putting these little things together. So that's what you're going to be seeing here. Now, once I have the square pinwheel cane kind of put together, what you're going to do is you're going to make 16 of these. Once you have all 16 made, pretty much the pattern goes where if you've got a black um, triangle on one side, you butt it up against a white. If you've got a white, you, you butt a black right up against next to it. So this way then it's the opposite each time. And that's the original pinwheel pattern that I'm going to be creating right here. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk through the rest of this segment, and then we'll move on. Now I want to mention here, this was my first time out in creating this pinwheel pattern type cane. And when I did so, like you saw, I had cut a bunch of little segments and I put them together, black, white, black, white, and then put them into this combination. At this point, I did not cut the cane in half. Instead, I just made 16 of these little things and just put them all together the way the pattern was supposed to lay out. Now, after going through this, there were a couple of things that I discovered that really came in handy. And one of those things was my ruler. Right here, you're seeing me just kind of, you saw, saw how I kind of leaned the metal part of my ruler into that triangular cane. It helped mesh my black and white segments together. It made such a difference. Oh, I can't tell you. It was huge. And then you take those two and you put them together and you have your square cane. Well, from here, I was like, okay, I'll just go ahead and add these in though to eat for, to the larger component of the 16 logs, right? From here, I found that even though, I mean, these were like, what, a quarter of an inch all the way around, I didn't have to reduce this much. Because I used that clay gun and because the little um, disc uh, roping was so tiny, you don't have to do a lot of reduction. Yay! Because <laughs> I know for some of you, cane work is a pain and you don't like to reduce. That's, it's one of those like skills that you have to just kind of learn over time. And so this is a nice way of where I don't necessarily have to reduce it the entire way. I can just use my clay gun and as I put it, cheat a little. <laughs> Anyways, from here, I decided what the heck I was going to go ahead and reduce it down anyway. I wanted to see how it would do when I got a little bit tinier. And 
it worked out great. Oh my goodness. I still, it retained its detail, of course, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it, it also kind of made it where when I get down this tiny, usually it takes me some time to do so. Well, by going through the clay gun and having me do most of my cane through that, it saved a lot of time. Okay, so in creating this pinwheel cane, I decided I really wanted to do a set of jewelry for you guys. I thought, it's time. It is so over time in doing this sort of thing. So right here I have some gray clay. It was rolled out on a number four setting on my Atlas Post machine, and you can use gray or silver, whichever tickles your fancy. Anyway, um, I put two pieces down, and yes, they are not the same height you know i mean this is me cutting off of a cane so it's not necessarily going to be the same thickness right and i'm putting these down onto that gray clay and i'm kind of just using my blade to bring in the edges so that it'll line up with that pattern all the way around now once i get and i'm going to be putting down a number of these slices so this takes a little bit of time to do so you're going to be putting down these slices once you have a nice big patch of this though, you're gonna bring in your acrylic roller and you're gonna go ahead and gently go over the top of it with that roller. Now this thing is not gonna be perfect and when you roll over this, you, you know, your pattern might kind of warp a, a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter that much. Once you have this though somewhat more level, you're gonna bring in some cutters. Now I started out with these cutters and you know what? Halfway through, I changed my mind. <laughs> but just to kind of show you what I did do, I started doing it where I thought, okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to make a pendant piece and I'm going to make a pair of matching earrings. So I went with a larger, um, this is kind of almost like a teardrop kind of form, and then with some smaller ones. But I really didn't like the look of it. So what I did was I decided to go with my oval cutters instead. And you know, I had already cut down, so I'm like going, okay, how do I make this better? And I went into my oval cutters and I thought, that's all right, we'll just recut, use the oval cutter, and just go from there. And that worked out great. It worked out really good. And I'm not going to use this full pattern. I thought, okay, yeah, I could, but eh, to me, that's too predictable, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sounds just like Laura. <laughs> Anyway, um, I came back in and right here, this is what I did. I brought that same cutter in and I cut a, just almost a crescent moon section out with that. And I decided to use that onto another piece of my gray clay here. So I'm going to lay that little crescent moon piece, pick it up with my blade, bring it over to that gray clay and just place it down onto that gray clay. And I kind of widened it out just a little bit because I'm going to come back in with that same oval cutter, recut it, and this way then I have a little bit of pattern I can play with onto the pendant piece I'm forming right here. And yes, you're correct. You just saw me use a piece of saran wrap to go over that. It created a nice dome effect in creating this pendant piece and it made that patterned area that I had built up with that pinwheel it made it look a whole lot more finished and it really just you know it it just made it, defined it so much better than what i would normally do if i would have just used the cutter without that saran wrap anyways i'm bringing in a skinner blend here and this was a fan folded cane at one time i turned it into a round cane it was of my blue my magenta and my yellow and yes it's a very tiny petal light cane because that's what we're turning this into and I'm going to place this right into my pendant piece. I needed to bring in some color. I have my gray and I have my black and white. Guess what? You need to throw in the color so it'll draw the eye and make it look really awesome in the end. So from here I'm going to go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I put the rest of this pendant piece together.
Okay, so I had the same problem with the pendant that I did here now with the earrings. I had cut these a, a different shape. I decided not to do that. So I'm bringing in my saran wrap and I have another oval cutter. And it doesn't matter that I'm not getting the entire oval because we want this to match up with our pendant, right? Well, with the pendant, I had used a half moon of this pattern. So I just needed the bottom half of that cutter. It doesn't matter what the top looks like, just so long as I got a nice rounded section on the bottom part of this, of this set of earrings. Now, once I cleared away most of that like extra clay that's around this outside edge here, once I got that kind of taken out, I had to figure out, okay, how big of that crescent moon was I gonna need? How much do I really want? So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm bringing in that saran wrap, but I'm also bringing in those little cutters and I'm like, okay, which one? I finally went with the little bit larger cutter because I thought that would probably work the best and trying to position it is a little bit hard, but you can do it. You know, sometimes you're not gonna get it exactly precise, but as long as you get it as close to it, that's all that matters. You just needed a nice crescent for you to be able to create these earrings. And they look, you know, they look so close, you, no one's gonna know whether or not they're off by a little bit. Besides, you're gonna come in with really that gray clay once more. You're gonna lay another sheet down. And by the way, this gray clay was rolled out on a number four setting on my Atlas Pasta Machine. And you're just gonna take those crescents, you're gonna lay those down. When you do, you're gonna reuse that same cutter once more, and it's gonna be the same shape. <laughs> it's gonna work, and see how I'm spreading out that kind of crescent-like effect? When I go down with the cutter, it's not gonna matter. It's gonna look like it was supposed to be just like that anyway. All right, so right here, I'm bringing in that same little colorful cane that we're gonna make our little petals, our little flower thing, and we're gonna do the same thing with these earrings, except we're just gonna make a little less, if you will. So we're gonna go ahead and take two of these petals and we'll place them in the middle, really, of each earring, and they're going to mirror each other. And then we're gonna add in our leaves and finish up this set entirely. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the backing on my pendant and my earrings here, and I'm bringing in my liquid Sculpey, right? And I'm gonna use the clay to clay thing where I've got my liquid Sculpey, but I'm also gonna throw in my super glue. And you guys are like, really? And the reason why I do that is because I wanna have a nice, how do I say, a nice cut line around this. I wanna cut it flush with the harder clay. And to do that, I can't do it exactly with just liquid sculpey because it wants to move everywhere <laughs> it wants to go everywhere it's like it's like on a skating rink ah you know <laughs> no it just wants to move and because it wants to move so much i really can't cut it flush 
and do that in a really nice way. So I'm adding just a dab, like a dot of like super glue on the back, but along with my liquid Sculpey to adhere in my earrings and my pendant piece. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I finish up the set, and we'll move on to the second set with a little bit more fun involved. Okay, so here's my fun color. Yes, I, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I could, you know, I, I could do black and white, but after a while you're like going, okay, I want, I want to try something a little different. So I brought in my blue clay and I put it in my clay gun and I decided we're going to go ahead and press out some long lengths of my triangular, well, my triangle log. And I did a number of these. I want to say four or five. These things were at least a foot long. Okay, and part of it was because I want 16 of those little tinier triangle type canes. And if I cut one of these like foot long ropes into two inch sections, I'm going to get like, I want to say one, two, three of the regular triangle to triangle type smaller canes. Anyway, right here, I'm taking the two triangle ones, the white and the blue. I decided to go with white and blue instead of the black. I don't know, for some reason with me, black is great. Um, it works great against really light color, but for some reason, I like the white with a darker color better. It, I, I think there's just a, a nicer look to it, but that's just my own preference. Right here, I'm bringing in my ruler and notice how I use that ruler. I'm taking, I'm butting it up where these two pieces then, these two logs kind of adhere to each other. It's a lot easier to move them out, to lift them up off your um, tile surface. It works great. Now, when I did this process earlier, the thing was, is I cut those little, those little logs into little tiny pieces. They're about two inches each. That was a lot harder to put together. This was a lot easier because all I'm doing now is like, I've got one long strand, or I should say two long strands. I'm gonna then take, and I brought in my baby powder because I kept having problems with my ruler kind of attaching to the clay and I wanted to pull it apart. So remember to bring in either your baby powder, your cornstarch, whatever kind of release agent you like to use. Use that on your ruler, especially your, and I use the stainless steel. I, it's just kind of nice, got a nice firm edge to it. That's why I love it. Anyway, when you do this, go ahead and then measure your, your you know, each one. So two inches for each section. It makes it so much easier. And then when you pull these apart, you could put them right together, easy peasy, no problems. One more important fact though to this particular cane, when you go to line these up, when you have half and half, you flip it around so that you have the triangles opposite of each other. Make sure it lines up on the inside, just like I did there. I like to try and line it up so that I've got that blue right next to that white and that you don't have white next to white or blue next to blue. You want to make sure they're as opposite of each other as possible and that they line up squarely. Okay, so I've made half of these. So I've got eight of those components together. And since this thing was two inches, I thought, let's just go ahead and cut it in half. We're gonna make this easy on ourselves. <laughs> so I took my blade, cut this in half, and then you just reform it to the point of where it looks like, okay, you got all the pattern working for you, and there you have your cane, and this time in color. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna reduce this down a little bit, not a ton. I decided that 
I really just wanted to adhere this together more than anything. At this point, it was kind of a nice, the nice thing about doing this from the clay gun is that it almost automatically takes you down to the size of cane you want in the first place. There, this thing was not that big. I want to say it was probably, oh, an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half wide at most, you know, so in diameter. I, want, I think it was more like an inch and a quarter an inch. This thing was not that big. Once I got it together, it was like, okay, I really don't need to reduce it a ton. So if you don't need to, don't. <laughs> Cut your slices and go with it. Um, if you like the idea of having much more of this cane, though, then increase you know, your length. So I would go up to either three inches or something like that. Just know that when you increase that length, it's going to be a lot more unwieldy, and you're going to have to manage it a lot more. So that's why I like to go down to about an inch when I do these canes. Okay, so I know you've noticed here, wait a minute, she's got black and white, she's got blue and white. Yes, we're going to mix this up a little bit. I wanted to just, I thought, why not? I had some leftover. I thought, let's put it together, see what happens. And this is the fun thing. If you add in color and then do a black and white next to it, that's the nice thing about these canes. You can go ahead and intermix, do all sorts of different things. So don't think you're restricted to just like one color and white or black and white. Maybe do a multicolor type feature when it comes to this cane. There's all sorts of ideas here. And I haven't even explored them all. So come in here, play with this pinwheel cane. I think you'll love it. All right, so now we're gonna make that second set of jewelry and this time around, we're gonna use the blue and white cane. And I did not, yes, you could tell right here, I did not reduce this down a ton. You know, I really did with the black and white and it really almost, it's almost like a Natasha, it's starting to go to mud. <laughs> not quite, but you know, I was like, okay, I'm pushing the limit of this cane. And right here, when I didn't really, you know, reduce it down a ton, it was so much more fun to play with. So. Yeah, again, keep that in mind about the whole reducing thing. You might want to just like say, guess what? We're just going to take it down so far and have that, you know, inch tight cane or inch and a quarter tight cane and work with it from there. And I really did like that because when I came in with my cutter, the pattern was much more, was much more precise. Um, I didn't have to worry about lining it up and then if I cut the cane just a little bit, if it would go wonk on me and then the pattern would kind of distort a little bit. At, with this, at this kind of size, there wasn't that, that problem, okay? And so when I laid the slices down, they almost lined up perfectly and I didn't have to do a whole lot to it. You could tell right here, I did bring in my blade a little bit, but you know, it worked out good. Plus this thing filled up the space a lot faster. I didn't have to worry about putting down a ton of slices. I only needed really three here. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start creating our pendant and earring piece. And then we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start creating my flowers, my leaves. And in this set, I decided to bring in my leaf cane. So I'm gonna add in just another little element to this particular set. But from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys watch my hands talk as I put this second set of jewelry together.
All right, so this is the end result of creating my pinwheel canes and my pinwheel jewelry all in polymer clay. Please use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.